Now we are starting to solve higher order differential equations. The first method uh, I will introduce is called the reduction of order. And this is actually quite self-explanatory. Literally, I mean you reduce the order of differential equations so you can solve it easier. So what is the catch? There should be some catch. Well, let me tell you what the catch is. You need to know one of the solutions. That's how you will be able to reduce the order of, of it. Okay. Another catch. Let's say that I have a differential equation with an 8 order. Well, if I reduce the 7th order, well, I, can, I accomplish something, but it's not a huge deal because I still have to deal with a 7th order differential equation, right? So the practical, from the practical standpoint, this is only applicable for a second order differential equation. Okay, if I have a second order DE, what I can do is, as long as I know one of the solutions, I know a solution, one of the solutions, I will be able to reduce it to the first order. And I'll show you how to do it, okay? So basically going from here to, well, here to here, by this, I'll show you. you, you know, I didn't cover that yet. Actually, the, the, the approach that I'm going to take will be used, will use the linear dependence and linear independent, okay? Let me say that this, uh, I said one solution, right? Let's call the solution y1 of x, right? I should, right? It will be a function of x. Obviously, I'm assuming that it is y is the, you know, dependent variable and x is the independent variable. I will write something and I'll ask you. So if one of the solutions is y1 of x, I'm going to go ahead and say that the second solution, this is the first solution that I know, second solution, by the way, why am I saying second solution? Maybe there's 10 solutions, right? Well, it's a second order differential equation. As long as the solution is unique, I should have two solutions, okay? Is in the form of ux times y1 of x. So right there and then, you should ask me, where is this u of x coming from? Well, I'm going to find it, okay? That's the unknown over here. And you may ask me, the second question can be this. Why not? You, can u of x be a constant like 5, 2, 27? Um, if that is the case, what will happen is, as we discussed in the previous segment, this and this will be linearly dependent. I don't want linearly dependent solutions, okay? So you simply what you accomplish is, is this, if one of the solutions is sine of x, 2 times sine of x is also a solution. So that's not a huge accomplishment. I kind of knew that before I get into this, okay? The big deal is getting a independent, linearly independent solutions, okay? So, okay, let's get going and try to, uh, you know, approach this from this angle. Let's say that I will have this, a second order differential equation, and I'm going to look at the homogeneous, okay, is equal to zero. Okay, this is a homogeneous, linear, second order differential equation. As you know, I've been doing this for a while, I'll divide every, everything by a2 of x, right? So I want to just leave this alone. a1 of x divided by a2 of x, y prime plus a0 of x divided by a2 of x, y will be equal to zero. So far so good. So I will go ahead and call this px, I'll call this q of x, okay? Note that when I was doing the first order differential equations, whatever was in front of was p of x, just want to highlight, and q of x was here, right? So, you know, just a little bit different, okay? So then this whole thing uh, turns out to be y double prime plus p of x y plus q of x y y prime will be equal to zero. Homogeneous equation. So far so good. I mean, I didn't do anything really, you know, different, right? So if uh, y1 of x, y1, I mean, this is given to me, y1 of x is a solution. If this is a solution, I said that u of x times y1 of x also needs to be a solution, right? So what I'm trying to do now here, and let's call this y2 of x. My goal is this. I mean, obviously I can insert y1 of x here. I also can insert y2 of x over here and get myself, um, you know, any question. But as you will see, now I have to obtain the derivative of this, and I have to obtain the second derivative of this. So why don't I do this separately and then just plug it in? I think that will be much easier for me, maybe not for you, but for me it's much easier. So I'm going to start by that. So if I have, if I take the derivative of this equation, here's what's going to do. I'm going to do the chain rule, right? You know that. So I'm going to have y prime will be equal to u prime y1 plus u y1 prime, right? A simple uh, chain rule. 
And I'll do one more because I need to go to y double prime, right? That is also a part of the question. So that will be u double prime y1 plus u prime y1 prime, okay? Plus u prime y1 prime plus u y double prime. So I, let me rewrite this because I have something here. u double prime y1 plus 2 u1 prime, you see these two, u1 prime y1 prime plus u y double prime. So now what I will accomplish is this, I'll take this and plug right here, I'll take this, plug right here and then equate to zero because it's a homogeneous equation, right? Well, it's in reality it's easier uh, said than done, so but well, we'll do, I mean we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Let's do it. Okay, wish me luck u double prime y1 plus 2u 1 prime y1 prime well I don't have to write 1 here right I'm getting confused myself yeah there's no 1 um, okay let's continue u y double prime so this is the first term right plus I, I will multiply p of x times this should be a little bit more easier u prime y1 plus u y1 prime so that is the last term is going to be q of x times what am I going to insert just y no I'm inserting y2 right so I'm going to write u y1 will be equal to 0 so now I will take parentheses with respect to u and see which the terms are going to be remaining so you will see here um, this is one of the terms you see I y double prime plus p of x times you see here y1 prime plus q of x times y1 you see here so this is everything is multiplied by u and I'll do the same treatment for you know let's call this plus now I'll do it with u prime and that will be let's look up there 2y1 prime right and plus p of x the other term that I didn't really touch yet is going to be y1 do you see that okay so why am I putting arrows so that I, I know that I count those terms already like so this this term is this term is gone this account of this account of this account of this account. this is the one that's remaining right so I'm gonna write that plus u double y1 will be equal to zero I'd like you to look at this what is this let me go up as a hint not too much up right there look here so y1 I should have said y1 here right here I'm up. so y1 is a solution so when I plug y1 to here what well, I'm gonna get zero right because y1 is a solution itself so this will obtain zero so that term will drops out that's pretty good okay so that's drop out so what I left is what was the second and the third uh, term, which they are actually shorter. So that's some good news, not great, but some good news, right? This is, you know, so this is gone. So this is what I have here, right? So then what am I going to solve, right? How am I going to solve this? I'll tell you one of the oldest tricks in the book, okay? One of the oldest tricks in the book is that if I have myself, you know, second and the first derivative, I do a substitution, which will make sense to you. W is equal to U prime, right? Then I can get rid of double, and that's how I will able to reduce the order of an equation from the second order to the first order. That is, this is the key. Okay, and then I simply go ahead and write this in. So I will write this one. Obviously, let me first write the second, uh, you know, first order. Now this is going to be w prime, a, and this is going to be w. So let's write w prime first. Y one w prime because that's how we write. Um, 2y prime plus p of x times y1 w is equal to 0 so this is a first order number one two this is linear right three this is separable and that will be key for me right so the first thing I will do is I will uh, divide everything by y1 just like I did so you will see that I'll get myself um, plus uh, 2y prime plus p x y1 by y1 right 
I should say y1 plus, right? So let's be careful, y1, that's the solution that I have, times w will be equal to 0, right? So now I'm going to move on to the other side, so I'm going to have w prime, then, will be equal to, and I'll move the other ones to the other side. You know, minus 2y prime plus p of x y1 divided by y1 times w, right? So now I will look into this way. So this w, as you know, w prime, what is w prime? That is going to be dw dx, right? So if I have dw dx, now I can separate them with, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, side to side. So I can do this. I can call this dw by w will be equal to minus the same thing, y1 prime plus px times y1 by y1 times dx, right? So I'll take the integral of both sides, right? This side and this side. The left hand side is going to give me ln of w will be equal to minus 2 times, um, let's, let's do this integral of the right hand side. Uh, because I want to show you something. So I'm going to get myself 2 min uh, minus 2 y prime y1 prime by y1 dx minus integral of p of x dx. Okay, so let's do ln of w will be equal to minus 2. What is this integral? That is going to be my ln of y1, right? minus integral of p of x dx, remember this integration constant, right, plus the constant of z, right. So if I move these things around a bit, uh, you know, e to the power of both sides and basically move this to this side of the equation, you're going to see that uh, I'm going to get myself w y1 prime, y multiplication, because these are ln and there's a negative in front of it, look at it, negative means it's 1 over, right, so if I multiply, I'm going to multiply and it will be equal to I did this before as well, e to the power of c, I'm going to call this c1, c1 e to the minus p of x dx. This looks familiar, right? Okay, what am I going to know? Well, do you, did you remember this w was du dx? So now what I have to do is, you know, let's leave this du dx alone. So I'm going to have du dx will be equal to c1 e to the integral minus p of x dx divided by y1 square, right? So what am I going to do? I will move this to the right hand side and take the integral of both sides. I'm not going to show you the details because this, this is becoming a really long segment. U will be equal to c1 e to the, well, I need to take the integral of it, right? Because, you know, look here, when I move this dx here, take the integral, so that's what the c1 is a constant, so I take out of the integral. So e to the minus p of x dx, by y1 square dx plus an integration constant of c2. As I use c1 over here, this will be c2. So now, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to say something and you will be like, whoa, 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 where is it coming from? Just give me one minute, right, please? c1 is equal to 1, c2 is equal to 0. Okay, now time to explain. So remember, I'm interested in the fundamental set. Right. As long as I'm interested in the fundamental side, I can say that hey, c2 is equal to zero, so that I can get rid of this value, right? And if I say c1 is equal to one, so I get rid of this constant over here as well, because at the end of the day, the other solution that I'm interested in, like which is in this format, right? Y is equal to u of x, well, rather yeah, y2, right? Uh, times y1 of x, right? So I don't really, um, you know, I want to make this as simple as as clean as possible so I get myself a fundamental set. And then I can generalize this if I choose to, okay? So then if I just basically take this u and plug it over here, I will get myself a final equation for this particular case, y1 of x integral e to the minus integral of p of x dx by y1 square of x dx, right? So basically this is the y1 of x, first uh, solution, and this is the u of x. So basically this is kind of it, okay? After I establish this, actually the next steps is apply this to a, you know, some numerical numbers that, that you will be exposed to. But at the end of the day, as the, in, the derivation is much more general, right? So I don't need to do many, many examples to illustrate how this is done. Okay, let's actually go ahead and box this up as well. Have a great day. I'll catch up with you very soon.